Okay, this is the last part of section 9.1. Um, we're going to be talking today about errors and type 1 and type 2 errors. Um, basically, it's ways that we could do the problem wrong, um, conclude one thing when we should have concluded another. Um, before we look at error, though, um, let's just kind of review how to write the null and the alternative hypothesis for a given situation. So the first situation we're looking at is a company makes a device for patients to wear that measures blood pressure at random times throughout the day. Based on the results, the device calculates whether there is significant evidence that the patient's mean systolic blood pressure is greater than 130. Okay, so we are always looking for evidence against the null and for the alternative. So if this is saying that we're trying to see if there is significant evidence for being greater than 130, that's what we are looking for. So that would be the alternative, being greater than 130. We're trying to prove the null wrong and conclude the alternative. Um, the null hypothesis, I mean, if you want to just memorize this, the null hypothesis always has an equal sign. So if I just change this to mu equals 130, that's the null hypothesis. Um, for a court case, a person being tried for a crime in a court case, the null hypothesis is that you're innocent until proven guilty. Okay, so we're trying to um, find evidence against the null and conclude the alternative. So if we were against being innocent, we would conclude guilty. Um, now, just remember, we might not have enough evidence to conclude the alternative. So we might not have enough evidence to say guilty. Then what's our conclusion? It's not innocent. We don't conclude someone's innocent. We conclude they're not guilty. Okay, so back up here, if we did not have enough evidence against the null for the alternative, if we did not have enough evidence, we would not be able to conclude mu is greater than 130. That's all. We would not say, oh, then mu equals 130, because couldn't mu be less than 130? So we're just going to say that the alternative we didn't have enough evidence for. Never conclude the null, I guess is basically what I'm trying to get you guys to say. We either have evidence against the null, so we conclude the alternative, or we don't have enough evidence against the null. That's it. Okay. So, we hope that our sample is a good representative um, sample. So, every now and then, though, you're going to get a sample that's a little weird or a little fluky. Um, and that's going to make you come to the wrong conclusion. And those are called errors. So a type 1 error is when you reject the null. So that means that you would conclude the alternative. When, in fact, the null was true, you should not have rejected the null. So you rejected the null when you shouldn't have. Or you concluded the alternative when you shouldn't have. That's a type 1 error. A type 2 error is when you fail to reject the null. So you, you did not have enough evidence. You thought you did not have enough evidence when the alternative really was true. So you failed to reject when you should have rejected the null. So that's type 1 and type 2 errors. Okay, so let's go back to our blood pressure device example. So going back to here. Okay, a type 1 error 
is rejecting the null. Okay, so here's your null and here's your alternative. A type 1 error is rejecting the null and concluding the alternative when the null was actually right. So going back to our blood pressure example, a type 1 error would be if we thought the blood pressure was high when it really was fine. Here, go back. Putting it in the context of the problem. I'm trying to get this. There. Okay. So we rejected the null and conclude the alternative. But we did that incorrectly. So we thought that the blood pressure was high when it really was fine. If you can kind of see that. So that would be a type 1 error. We rejected the null. We concluded the alternative. So we thought the blood pressure was high when really it was okay. Now just think about some consequences of that. If you think that a patient's blood pressure is high, you might prescribe them some medicine, right? Well, if this is a type 1 error, you would be giving them medicine when they don't need it. Okay, and there could be consequences for that. A type 2 error in this scenario. So now a type 2 error is when you fail to reject the null when the alternative was true. Let's go back. Okay. So the alternative really was true but we failed to reject the null. We did not, so what we happened is we didn't find enough evidence that the blood pressure was high, but it really was. Okay, so in other words, we thought the blood pressure was okay, but it really was, the alternative was true. It really was high. So we thought the blood pressure was okay, when really it was high. Now there's consequences for this type of error too, um, especially for like pregnant women. Um, one of my good friends, when she was pregnant, she had high blood pressure, but they didn't either detect it or they didn't really think it was a problem. I'm not exactly sure, but what ended up happening was she had this huge seizure and then she had to have her baby um, 10 weeks early. But it has a good ending because that kid, I just was at his birth, his seventh birthday party last night. Um, and he's awesome. He's the same age as my son, Finn. Um, but it was super scary because they thought her blood pressure was okay, but it really was high. So basically, um, if you're a doctor <laughs> ever in the future, don't mess around with blood pressure. <laughs> All right. Um, court case example. So, going back, type 1 error again. Type 1 error is when you reject the null and you conclude the alternative when really the null was true. So, basically, we're saying someone's guilty when they really were innocent. And now, you know how I said never conclude the null? We're not concluding it. We already made our conclusion, but it was wrong, okay? So we said someone was guilty when they were not. So you'd be convicting an innocent person, okay? And there's definitely consequences that go with that. Um, someone could be in jail for a long time when they really didn't do anything. And then finally when they get out, they're, you know, it's really hard to come back from that. Um, you know, trying to get a job, trying to get a loan, trying to get an apartment or a house. Um, when it's on your record, even if it was wrong, it's it messes up your whole life. So that would be really bad. Type 2 error, 
go back. Get rid of this stuff. Okay, a type 2 error is when you fail to reject the null when the alternative really was true. So, fail to reject the null means we concluded not guilty, but really they were guilty. The alternative really was true. So we said not guilty, but they really were guilty. So we said they're not guilty, they go free, but the, really, the person really was guilty. So consequences for that, you can think about, you know, someone who's committing crimes is out there committing crimes some more. So you're going to be asked in the homework to figure out what a type 1 and a type 2 error is, and then you're going to probably have to discuss what are some consequences of those errors. If you're ever asked to say which error is worse, that's your opinion. So there's really no wrong answer. You just have to explain yourself. Okay, so here's a little chart to maybe help you. Okay, so what is it called when you reject the null, but the null was true? Okay, if you reject the null when the null was true, that's a type 1 error. Okay, what's it called when you reject the null and the alternative was true? So you're against the null and you're concluding the alternative and the alternative was true. That's a correct decision. What if you fail to reject the null and the null is true? That's the correct decision. And then if you fail to reject the null and the alternative is true, that's a type 2 error. So this might kind of help you with your homework, I think. Okay, now, um, there's a probability of making a type 1 error, and that's called alpha. And you'll recognize alpha because we talked about that yesterday. So alpha is like this cutoff point that we compare our p-value to. And if our p-value is greater than alpha, we conclude one thing. And if our p-value is less than alpha, we conclude another. So alpha is also tied to the probability of making a type 1 error. So what that means is we get a fluky sample that makes us reject the null when we shouldn't have. Um, our sample um, would be in one of the tails. So it'd be a wacky, weird, unlikely sample kind of thing. Um, if alpha is the probability of making a type 1 error, then if we reduce the alpha level, that'll reduce our probability of making a type 1 error. That's what I have right here. So yesterday we would choose our alpha value. Sometimes it was 5%, sometimes it was 10%. So if you choose a lower alpha, you have a less chance of making a type 1 error. Okay, so this is just a little summary. Type 1 error is rejecting the null when the null is true. That equals alpha. Okay. Probability of making a type 2 error is beta. So here's how I remember it. A, a type 1 error, think of the first letter of the Greek alphabet. That's alpha. Type 2 error, the second letter of the Greek alphabet, is beta. So maybe that'll help you. Um... So making a type 2 error, that would mean we got a weird, wacky sample. It made us fail to reject the null, but we shouldn't have. So type 2 error is mistakenly fail to reject the null, and that equals beta. Now, you, um, you might be given alpha, and you might be asked to talk about beta. So um, this is... A little diagram just to kind of help you. If the value of alpha goes up, the value of beta will go down. So if your probability of making a type 1 error goes up, then the probability of type making a type 2 error goes down. Or if alpha goes down, beta goes up. So think of it like a, a seesaw. Then there's something called power. Power is basically the probability of doing the problem the right way. So correctly rejecting the null when the alternative is true. So, 
power we want more power right we want we want a higher probability of correctly doing the problem so power has this formula equals 1 minus beta so it's basically um, kind of the opposite of beta so as beta goes down power will go up or as beta goes up power goes down now power and alpha do the same thing they both go up or they both go down that does not mean that they are equal okay power does not equal alpha I might write that down they don't equal but they they do the same thing okay so power and alpha um, are not the same value but they do the same thing they they do both go up or down okay so how can we increase power? So how can we make sure that the probability of us correctly rejecting the null when the alternative is true, um, how can we make that power go up? We can do a couple things. We can increase the sample size. That's one way. And we can um, increase alpha. So going back, see this? If you increase alpha, you can increase power. That's one way to do it. Or getting a larger sample size would also do it. Okay, so I believe that, yep, that's it for the notes. Um, you have another worksheet today, um, and then I will see you soon. Okay, thanks.